choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. We stand at the birth of a new millennium, ready to unlock the mysteries of space, to free the earth from the miseries of disease, and to harness the energies, industries, and technologies of tomorrow. That was the 35th and 45th presidents talking about space exploration. Scientists now say that not one, but seven Earth-sized planets orbiting a nearby star just 40 light years away could potentially harbor life. Joining us right now to break down this new discovery, former NASA astronaut Tom Jones. Tom, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. So what do we know about this, these, these planets? Well, it's a whole family of planets discovered around this uh, star about 40 light years away. It's called TRAPPIST-1. And the latest discoveries from the Spitzer Space Telescope show that there are seven worlds tightly packed, wrapped around in orbit around this star. And what's unique about this solar system, uh, mirror to ours, is that all seven of these planets are rocky bodies, relatively small, Earth-sized. And so they're in the right position, three of them especially, in the right position to have liquid water on their surfaces. And of course, that's one of the fundamental ingredients for life. So this is a, a place that might harbor an Earth-sized world that's like ours in its ability to, to harbor life. That might harbor life right now? Uh, right. Uh, this is a, a small star, cooler than our sun. It's only about the size of Jupiter. And so even though these worlds are closely orbiting it, uh, we, where you'd usually get fried by the radiation from that star, this cool star allows liquid water to exist uh, on the middle of these, uh, the middle three of these seven planets. And so this is a possible abode for life. We're finding more and more of these with advanced telescopes like the Spitzer Space Telescope that was used in this case. Tom, how do we verify this information? Because again, they're too far to reach with even um, space vehicles, if you will. Right. Well, the first clue about planets around TRAPPIST-1 uh, came last year with some ground-based telescope called the TRAPPIST telescope uh, run by a Belgian team. And then the Spitzer Space Telescope, NASA's infrared telescope in space, was able to stare at this star for a period of about 500 hours and confirm that there were not just three but seven uh, planets around this star. And then to come are Hubble observations looking for the atmospheres around these planets. So, you know, now we know that they're in the right temperature zone, but if they've got an atmosphere, that could mean, uh, again, even a more Earth-like environment than we've found thus far. Fascinating. Yeah, I was um, going to ask Tom, um, you know, it feels like we've gone through somewhat of a cool period, and it's great to see the renewed energy in our country around space exploration. Um, what's your perspective on some of the private companies starting to get involved? We were talking about Tesla earlier today. Um, well, uh, as we saw last week, um, Elon Musk's SpaceX company launched his private rocket, the Falcon 9, carrying cargo for the space station from NASA's historic Pad 39A, where I launched three times on the space shuttle. So now that's being used as a leased commercial facility. So the private companies are going to be uh, furnishing NASA with the cargo and eventually the astronaut transport craft they need to get to the space station. And as we think about um, returning to the moon, for example, with the new administration, uh, or maybe visiting an asteroid going on to Mars eventually, these private companies will be helping NASA uh, in the logistics area. They'll be providing in the cargo, the rocket fuel they need to get a deep space craft out to the moon, the asteroids, or Mars. And then at the same time in parallel, you're going to see those same companies taking tourists to space. So I know progress is slow in all of this and understanding, but these new, I'm really fascinated by these new planets. How long do you think it'll be before we could find out if there is life there? And what, is, how, what does this look like from here? Really interesting question. Um, in about five years, we'll have the uh, Webb telescope uh, in orbit. And that's got the sensitivity to look at the atmospheres of these new planets, for example, and to tell whether there are gases like methane, oxygen, water vapor in those atmospheres. And that will be the first detection of these chemical fingerprints of life. And so when we get to that step within about five years, we'll be able to know whether uh, these worlds are not only Earth-sized, not only the right temperature, but they've actually got atmospheres with the chemical signs that life may be there. And then the, the next step, of course, is to actually image these planets with more powerful telescopes in the generation to come so we can take pictures of these worlds and see what they're really like up close. Wow, really fascinating stuff, Tom. We will be watching. Thanks so much for your insights on this. We appreciate it. Glad to join you. Thanks. Tom Jones joining us there.